Hi, I'm Ava Wright of Contemporary Art Globally Speaking, and I'm here at Sauna Bend Gallery with Dakin Hart, the senior curator of... The Noguchi Museum. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you. Talk to me, please, about Wallaby, um, Rona Pondick's piece here, and uh, what sets Rona's work apart from other sculptors? I think what really makes Rona special is the time in which she's working and that she's really kind of working against uh, where most contemporary art is at the moment. Uh, contemporary art these days is in a very conceptual phase, a very conceptual mode. Um, and, and I have to be honest myself, I, I tend to be interested in work that's on the conceptual branch of the sculpture family tree. That is things sort of coming out of Duchamp rather than the modernist formalist side of things. But uh, what sets Rona apart is really, I kind of, if I had to boil it down to one word, I would say resolution. There's an enormous amount of resolution in the work, which means that it's detailed down to the, the very, very fine details. Well, I'll give you an example. Anatomically speaking, you can tell the difference between, for example, a great Greek original of this figure and a, and a Roman copy, because the Greek original is constructed from the inside out. It's constructed from the skeleton mm. to the musculature to the skin. A copy is almost always created from the outside in by looking at the skin of something else. And the, the copyist may try to appreciate and understand what's going on beneath the skin, but ultimately is copying from the outside in. Rona's creations, and what's really important to remember with Rona is that everything you're looking at has been invented Everything yes. here yes. has been, aside from the, there is casting involved in the human body parts, but the animal itself, every millimeter of it has been formed by her hands. There's no point at which, and this, this is the extraordinary thing about her, and this is why she's a figurative sculptor with a capital S, like Rodin and Michelangelo and Polyclides, because she has, there's no point at which artistic intention breaks down. Every bit of this wallaby's body, she's decided what it should look like, what it should feel like, how one part should, can or should transition into another part. Um, every, every bit of its anatomy is a creation of her mind and her hands. And that's, you know, in, in, in a, in, an art which has become more about, you know, the, the big thing with Duchamp was Duchamp turned art making from a matter of taste and an exercise of taste into a matter of choice and will and decision making and choosing. Um, and, and many sculptors today, most sculptors today are agglomerators, assemblers, choosers. They select things, they put things together. Rona is somebody who is still making everything. So it's, it's not that you can say, it's perfectly fair to say with a, a sculptor who's selecting things that everything about that thing is integral to what they were after. But at some point that breaks down. You know, if a, if a sculptor selects a box and incorporates a box into a larger tableau, it's hard to make a point about the nails in the box and how the artist felt about the nails in the box or why the nails in the box are important because at some point that came from somewhere else. That was somebody else's decision. They decided to incorporate it into the piece, but it's still that whatever it is about that nail is rooted in somebody else's choice making. With Rona, every piece of Wallaby reflects her ideas, her sentiments, her skill, her technique, um, and it's, it's not incidental, you know, that, it, for, it's hard to convey just why and how that's, just how important that is. Um, but when you look at the work she's made um, and something like Wallaby, which has such enormous bathos to it, so much um, emotion, you know, can evoke so much emotion. It's because of the subtle details. You look at Wallaby from behind and it looks coiled like a shark and you walk in front of him, and all you want to do is give him a hug. And you look I at, agree. when you look at a great piece of Greek sculpture, it's every nuance of 
stance, weight transfer, posture is important and significant. And for those sculptures, that came from looking very, very closely at the human body. Um, with Rona, every one of those details is equally important, but for her, it's coming out of her imagination. And that's, that's an extraordinary thing. So she's, I agree. she's, a, she's approaching um, a kind of a, a, a fantastical invented universe with the attention to detail and the carefulness and the precision of the great anatomists. And that's an amazing thing. Her anatomical precision is, is very interesting. Uh, looking at the arm and the way it just seems to blend in with the fluidity, uh, the shiny material here, the, the stainless steel. That's amazing to me. The hand looks real. I mean, it actually looks like a, like a human hand. The detail's incredible. Yeah, and, and um, you know, to go back to that idea of resolution, people have compared these stainless steel, very highly polished stainless steel pieces to something like the, the cyborg out of the Terminator movies, the T-1000, which is a kind of a, a liquid comparison. mercury creation. It's an interesting comparison, The yeah. difference with Ron, Rona's work, um, if you go back and watch one of those Terminator movies now, they seem very crude. And the animation seems very crude and the cyborg seems very crude because we've come to expect, movies have gotten that much better, the computer technology has gotten that much better, so now we expect more resolution, a higher, more verisimilitude. We want it to look more hyper real than that 10 years old technology is capable of looking. Because at some point, it was a computer doing the three-dimensional modeling. And the humans set it up, but it was still a computer doing the modeling. Right, right. The difference with Rona's work, and, and some of these animal-human hybrids now are o well over 10 years old, um, when you look at them, they don't break down. The resolution in them doesn't break down. You can look as closely as you want, and the choices that are there maintain their meaning, and they maintain their ability to move us and make us think. And uh, like I said, again, for me, that's, that's an extraordinary thing. And that's why, for, for my money, Rona is absolutely the best figurative sculptor working today. I think I will agree with you. Thank you so much, Dakin. Thank you so much for joining me today here at Sonnabend Gallery. And thank you, folks. Have a wonderful day.